We sourced from our data of 1.2 billion people, plus public data, plus LinkedIn data, plus 100 plus data sources and your data, all in one interface. It can be ranked in order of best fit by AI or not. We fine-tuned it really quickly. We learned our mental model, adapted and got better and better and better. And then we found a search query that we loved, which you can save and come back to and continue to optimize. This is talent intelligence. Initiating becoming a hiring machine sequence in three, two, one. Hey everyone, it's Sam Keenly and Matt Chambers, and welcome back to Becoming a Hiring Machine. This is the show dedicated to fixing recruitment by going beyond saying what needs to change and instead teaches you how to make that change. Today, we have a phenomenal mic drop ahead of us. But before we get into that, I want to tell you a little bit more about the show. We have shows within the show. Sometimes we're going to have interviews with industry thought leaders and others who are shaking up the space, and they're going to teach us how to do something that they do that's helped them be successful. Other times, we're going to cover trending topics, items that recruiters are talking about or will be very soon and what those mean for them. Every Tuesday, come on over for a Tactical Tuesday episode where we go deep on how to do something that's going to help you drive better results in your day to day. Sometimes we'll shake it up. Q&A. Listeners can drop in questions that they'd like to hear us take on. Send those over to us at podcast at loxo.co. And occasionally you're going to hear a mic drop episode from Matt like today where, where he shares something that he's been bouncing around in his head, really thinking about a lot in the recruitment space and things that you need to know about. On that note... We have a mic drop episode that, without sounding too dramatic, I really believe this is one that we're going to look back on in in a year, two, three years as a moment that positively shifted the recruitment space. We all know a good workflow can be the difference between making or missing a placement for a critical job. But what if we said that's only scratching the surface of what an effective workflow can do? What if there was a workflow that lets you make more searches at once, get more done faster and with less chaos, make two to five more placements a year, and you can do it all in one place? That sounds magical, right? It's coming to be a reality. So that's what we're going to get into today. Let's jump right on in. Matt, so first things first, this workflow. There is something that that you've been working on here for a while. I've got to jump into and really start to, to see an experience. But what you're effectively calling it is the talent intelligence workflow. The way that I've heard you best describe this is... It's a pretty simple framework, but it solves a frustratingly challenging problem for many recruiters. How do I get myself as a solo recruiter or my team of recruiters to make more perfect fit placements? How do we do that consistently? How do we do that in a way that can scale? And how do we incorporate that into our day-to-day? And so what this talent intelligence workflow does is it combines your your day-to-day workflow, a suite of data products, and artificial intelligence to be able to handle the majority of what ultimately is about 90% of a recruiter's day-to-day is spent sourcing outreach items like that so that they can spend time doing what they do best, having conversations with interested, qualified, truly great fit candidates. So we're going to unpack that one in a minute. But first, we have to take a step back. Let's, let's set the stage a little bit. What has recruiting historically looked like, Matt? So is anybody familiar with the term post and pray? <laughs> because historically... <laughs> That's how a lot of recruitment has been done. And unfortunately, we, we, we're all laughing about that, but we all understand it. Um, and it's low hanging fruit. It's simple. But historically, if we go back in time and take a look at uh, percentages of how recruitment is done, ballpark, and these numbers are ballpark from a couple of years ago, but approximately 55% of recruiting is done via job advertisements, posting, right? You're advertising for inbound applicants. 40% is via referrals and internal hires, i.e., who do you know who's a good uh, product manager? Who do you know who's going to be a great uh, in finance or accounting, right? And then you end up hiring uh, often just uh, friends or, or nepotism, right? Not always, but that can be the case. Again, it's easy. It's a good cultural fit. It might not necessarily be the best mutual positional fit. Um, and then the last part is 5% of the remaining, which is professional recruitment which is outsourced to help professionals who do this for a living. And that can be in different variations of exec search, retain search, RPO, staffing, contingent, um, you name it. So that's what it's looked like. Uh, But just to summarize how it's been done from this, you can understand for vast majority of recruiters, even for most agencies and staffing firms, they do post and pray and they go for active candidates. They try to find people who are more warm because selling people to change careers and find passive candidates is one of the most difficult parts of recruitment. But that's where the magic happens and you find the right person in their career path 
who are ready for that role. And um, that's what recruitment is all about. So it sounds like you're you're leading me into this question. So how does the talent intelligence workflow really start to improve upon what, what recruitment has historically looked like? It took me and our company, and I think the market a long time, and uh, uh, the world's world-class retained search firms, they've been doing this for a long time. However, they never had the technology and the workflow to do it. So it's it takes six plus months, you know, it can take 90 days to fill a, a difficult role. But what we've been able to do and understand is that if you help unpack something, you zoom out and you break something out by from A to Z, all the different pieces, you can understand that recruitment is actually very process driven and it can be systematic and repeatable. And so how do you cut out most of the waste? And the vast majority of sourcing and research and admin, if you already have the data, you don't waste time structuring the data, go finding it, get it in your system, that's half the battle. And then also if you have a system that helps you pre-build your long list of candidates versus just randomly, uh, rule of thumb, having each recruiter do their own methodology, it just lots of the stuff is in the process improvement on the front end. And then after that, how do you automate and streamline and improve and get more intelligent with your outreach, which the follow-up component is a huge part of it. We'll, we'll kind of walk through some of this, but what you're going to notice is a big part of it is just having the right tools, right? Like anything, have, do you have the right tools to do your job to be successful? And then how can you maximize efficiency throughout not just one piece of the puzzle? This is where the magic is. You do not want to just optimize one or two pieces without them being inter uh, disconnected. It needs to be unified. And that's where the talent intelligence workflow is so magical and powerful. I love that. So a couple of things I took out of that is, I mean, you go back to any 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 job, really, whether you're sales, marketing, recruiting, um, engineering, there's always fundamental, fundamental parts of a job that need to be done. Um, if you do those well, you're going to do well in the job. What this really sounds like is dialing in those fundamentals and then understanding how they scale effectively. So instead of constantly searching for the shiny thing and trying to plug that in or something, it's it's really just understanding what are those those powerful items that you are doing in your day to day and scaling those out. So this is important. I think this is incredibly important. And why a fundamental thing like the workflow we think is something that needs to, to be doubled down on is it's utterly transformative for your team when it is adopted. So like we kind of teed up in the beginning, you're going to be able to work more searches at the same time. You're going to be able to get more done faster and with less tech chaos. You're not going to have to bounce around, do everything, trying to, to keep up with integrations, data being lost, all of the fun that makes you want to throw your laptop out the window. You're going to make way more placements each year and you're going to do it in, in one place that just allows you to work so much more fluidly and in a scalable way. So this magical talent intelligence workflow, this this has to be something super complicated, right? Are we talking about this like 30 step sequence here or, or what does this look like? You would think, right? And and that's uh, humans by nature, we overcomplicate things and add complexity, uh, but it's not. It's actually, uh, you know, genius is in the ability to simplify and reduce and eliminate and, and keep things as simple as you can. It's, it's not rocket science, right? We're not, we're not building something to go to Mars. We're, we have a job opening. We need a total addressable talent pool of viable candidates. And we need a methodology with some data and simple tools to just speed that up. So it's five steps. You create a role, you source candidates, you shortlist the best ones. So you curate essentially who are the very best mutual fit. And then you engage, right? Engage and follow up. And so you have, can have a human to human conversation. It's not AI. We're not talking about robots. We're talking about human to human conversation to help somebody understand you're not selling. This truly is the best possible fit for this human being. And that's then that's an easy part, right? You just help lead them to, you know, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't force people to drink. And that's that's where really good recruiters can help kind of connect those dots. And I can already hear it. This sounds an awful lot like my current process. Like, what am I missing? That that's a key part of a, a recruiter's day to day. So what is the the secret or what is it that makes it so impactful? And it's fun to see people come from outside the industry. And it's and even I've been having lots of conversations for a decade and Everyone thinks they have the same process. They think their process is perfectly fine. They, what's wrong with it? It works. We've been doing this for two decades, Matt. Wh why do we need a change? Well, you don't. But let me just show you. You tell me what you do. Just tell me what you do today. And I'll, I'll identify how big the gap is and how much opportunity there is for you to double or triple or 5x what you're doing. If you could do that, would you be open to change? Like, of course we would. And so then you kind of show the difference of how you're doing things and what unfortunately people do 
is they don't have a process, they don't have the proper tools, and they jump in and out and in and out of different tools. So you contact four people a day, you get distracted, you go get to the water cooler, you jump on a phone call, an interview, um, and you don't get as much done throughout the course of days, weeks, years. Uh, and that's the difference between world-class recruitment organizations and teams and ones that um, do okay, right? Makes sense. That totally makes sense. So the if you had to almost elevator pitch this to to someone in an exec search firm or a professional recruiter, someone who wants to to make this kind of switch, like what is the emphasis that they need to be going back to their team to understand why do we need to adopt the talent intelligence workflow? I hate the elevator pitch ones to put an entrepreneur or founders on the spot with those, right? You should be great at it. But um, if you boil it back and again, keep things simple, what are recruiters? What's the job? What job have you done? Why are you here? You are hired to fill a role. That's it, right? But if if you could perfect things, you would say, I want to find the very best possible human being on the planet for this exact role. That's impossible, right? Well, not, not necessarily. You can find the, the very most optimal, perfect fit. And so the goal ultimately is find the very best possible hire for each hiring company and candidate. And then from the elevator pitch, if you're able to leverage technology uh, in a way that combines workflow, data, and AI to do all those, to get the job done as quickly and efficiently as possible, then um, that's kind of the overall objective. Okay. I love it. So... Special surprise for for listeners. We're also going to have a video component of this because this is one of those items where it's it's like I always say, prove it, show me. Um, it's it's one thing to be able to say on your website, increase your ROI by two to five x, make more placements, but to truly see and understand just how well this workflow works and how easy it is to do, Matt's going to run us through it today. So uh, definitely hop on over to the video version of this if you want to take a look. But we'll also talk through it live. So Matt, if you want to, if you want to pull it up, we can, we can hop into a job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep this as tight as we can. Of course, Loxo is not the only software, right? Um, but you'd have to bolt together a lot of different software and tools, but you could do a talent intelligence uh, workflow with many different tools and Loxo, it comes in one. If you want to learn more or um, really understand it, of course, there's lots of options, but we'll, we'll move through it quick at a high level. So let's go through this, the process, right? What's step one? Well, Step one is you need to get a new search or a job, right? Hey, we're trying to hire somebody. We're going to, we just opened up a new search at Loxo yesterday. That's extremely ambiguous. We have no clue yet exactly what we're looking for. This is perfect. I've never, never worked on this before. I'm going to show you. So step one is let's figure out what's the title, right? And this is a very ambiguous one. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. It's a renewals account manager role, right? And that's what we think. Kind of want account manager. Kind of needs re- renewal specialist. So did a bit of research online, came up some titles that we liked. I'll even show you. Like, in fact, I ran a quick. I use GPT Chat generate a Boolean string for me for uh, SaaS companies with account manager or renewal specialist type of roles. Right. So it generates this Boolean string, which I'm going to show you in a second why I do that. So now I'm going to do the hiring company. Right. So obviously we're hiring for Loxo, and now our AI is. Full strength, gonna find perfect mutual matches, right? We're a remote company, so that's fine. But you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and if I wanted to, I could dial that into Denver where we were founded, or Austin potentially, or Dublin or Europe where we have team members all over the globe. Let's see. So this is a renewals specialist, right? I don't necessarily know what level it is, but we're open to uh Hipple, high performing early in the career type of employee or a director level that builds from the ground up, wants to do the better at you know, so I'm going to keep it nice broad. I need to grab a quick JD. I don't have one yet. So again, I would probably build one out, do a bunch of research or the new cheat code is throw it into GPT and then optimize from there. But I'm going to go ahead, populate that here for now. Of course, I'm going to come back and I would really take the time to get a good one and then load it in here. And the reason why is we would post that to get it out to people who who are going to come inbound, uh, as well as just for branding, lots of branding, um, it, but also we use our own machine learning NLP models to read this, to help with the matching and to help understand and learn and evolve. So it's really important, actually. I should be doing that, right? I'm not going to for today. And so now I'm going to go ahead and that's it. I'm going to create the role. So step one, we're creating the role. What's the title? Who, who's the company? It's Loxo. And ballpark, what's the seniority level, right? So what we're doing is we're, we're helping to get the, the AI and project going. So now what? Well, today, most recruiters now leave. The average 80% of recruiters, maybe even higher, 85, will just sit around. 
and hope that people apply, right? And that's why professional recruiters love it and they have jobs. You have to headhunt. You have to build talent pools. You have to go outbound while you're waiting for applicants or while you're sourcing on job boards. Well, with the Loxo, step one, create the job. Step two, you don't go anywhere. You go right into Loxo. Now here's the holy grail. You have access to 1.2 billion people, including public LinkedIn, including public profiles, including 100 plus data sources, plus your own database. It's up to date. It's refresh. You don't have to really go anywhere. All of the data at your fingertips in one place in ranked order with AI for this exact hiring company. So we just did this. We're on the fly. We're doing a renewals account manager for Loxo. Right now it's USA. We're getting way too many results. So now what? Well, let's go through this quickly and I'll show you how simple this is and how we're going to calibrate. This will designate they're already in our internal database, which is good, but I'm not sure yet, right? We're not sure. We're just going to start to build our mental model and pattern recognition of what we're looking for. So right now, one thing I, I notice is it's pretty senior, right? Skewing senior. Is that a good thing or bad thing? I don't know yet, right? We're looking at some enterprise. It's more account executive sales for now. This looks too much like sales for now. Renewals account manager, account exec. So it's skewing pretty heavy there. So what I would do is fine. We're now going to calibrate it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this and watch how much better this gets immediately. Just from quick calibration, really fast. Again, the AI is already ranking. It's quite broad for now. If I turn this off, then we have the whole entire universe. You know, we have way too many candidates. So I'm gonna keep this on just really quick. I'm gonna grab my, my quick Boolean. And the reason why I'm doing this, I don't yet know enough about the search or uh, the talent pool and what exactly I'm looking for. I'm kind of in the early upfront research phase. In exec search firms, they build a talent list of target companies um, competitors domain that takes nine months, right? It's, it's a lot of time. You have to specialize in it. We're going to shortcut that. You can do that, but we're going to shortcut that. Boolean works really well because most recruiters are just filtering by titles. You're going to miss a million people because you don't even know what you're looking for yet. Different roles. If it's tech, you might just put in languages, uh, bo like Python, Java, physicians and doctors and lawyers and stuff. You really focus on subspecialties. In this specific case, I'm just going to start with this. Again, this is ranked. In order best fit. Now we're talking with one Boolean string. Now we're starting to get ranked candidates in the order of best fit for Loxo with account management experience with renewals. Like you've got to be kidding me. Are you kidding me? So let's unpack that Boolean string for just a second. What all did you have built into that string? You had it looks like there's some some job titles and, and some other items in there. So what all did you have pulling in so it would dial this in so well? So what I did, you know, again, I'm, I'm flying here and keeping it pretty high level. And of course, the more, the more time you take up front to sharpen your saw, if you, you know, have, if somebody gives you an hour to go cut down a tree, you should spend 90% of it sharpening your saw. Take the time to think about the search. Take the time to build a strategy. Take the time to understand up front. And then you'll save nine weeks off on the back end. So what I did was I went to GPT and you don't have to use GPT. It just, uh, it's nice and it speeds up some time for now, but you just ask questions, if I'd open GPT, I'd say, what are similar, most the most similar titles for a SaaS company that is looking for somebody that re renews contracts? And then you, you see what you get, right? And I think I put, what's the most similar SaaS titles? Uh, and I could even do it in Google, right? You could say, um, what are common, the top common titles for in SaaS companies for handling account management and renewals? And it'll give you a list. You could take that too. And then you could take some of those titles and put it in a GPT and say, hey, build a Boolean string. By the way, Loxo at some point will have some button that says auto do the same thing. So that's it. And I, I took what it gave me, which was this. And so I copy and paste it. And what that does is it, it makes sure that you're not cutting anybody out. And so the half the battle with sourcing is you do not want to limit your funnel. And that's what happens with LinkedIn or job boards. Job boards are, you only get active candidates. So you get generally the very best talent are not looking, right? You have to go out and headhunt. They are looking. They're just not. That they're happy in their role. What people do when they go to LinkedIn too, is they, they get too caught up in titles. And then you have to come up with every possible permutation on the planet. Nobody does that. You can use this because the AI understands and has most similar titles. So it makes it pretty quick, but that's still not as effective. I, we recommend as a best practice, start with Boolean, enter a few keywords. If you do have nice strings saved or you can do it, enter that. And then whether the, the AI is turned on or not, if you turn it off, you're still going to get incredible results. They're just not going to be ranked in order of best fit for this exact hiring company for you. But 527 sounds like a lot. It's really not. So anyway, the more Boolean you add, the more filters you add, 
the better it gets. So if I wanted to fine tune this, for example, if I want diverse candidates, maybe we want a female candidate only, right? Or if we want, maybe there's different tools, right? We want super high intellectual, high pedigree company. Maybe we wanted people that went to the top organizations or worked at some of the top uh, companies in their background, right? There's smart, intelligent tools. There's other ones that are where startup, big company employees that come to startup get eaten alive. We do not want people that have that are currently, you know, have been working at a, a very large company for five years. They're just they've drowned. Anyway, you you kind of fine tune, and then really quickly, like I said, we'll go through some of these results. But we just did the hard part. We talked about it. We probably showed some people some new tips. And the more you know the searches, the more you specialize in these roles. It, recruiting at is pretty much just patterns uh, recognition at scale. If you look at ten thousand profiles, which is a lot, but it it's really not. It might take a, a month for a good recruiter. You're going to have fine tune your mental model for who a really good fit is. Then you have to understand each company and do the same thing for the hiring organization. Who is Loxo? What does their existing employee base look like? What is their pedigree? What is their intensity? What is their speed? And then you, what you're doing is you're just matching people with companies, right? As you do that, because the data is already resides in the interface and you have one click that automates your workflow. You're just literally going down with pattern recognition and you're just saying, okay, pretty solid. But um, until I look at more examples, I'm not sure yet. That's what you do. You don't have to do anything. Don't waste your time creating a, uh, an outreach, right? The old way you'd, you'd LinkedIn message them and then forget about them and jump into a different tool. The new way, stay focused. Put your butt in a chair, source and do this for an hour. Be very focused exhaust what we call the entire addressable talent pool for this market. So if I wanted to pull this up, for example, it would show you there's 500 total people with this, with these um, experience. Here's the backgrounds. Here's the past titles. Exhaust that. If you get an unbelievable talent pool of three, four or 500 candidates that are really high quality that match it, you might not have to go outside of your initial searches. If you find that you only have 12 candidates, then you're going to have to obviously start to expand it and either decide there's some of the must-haves that you thought are really not must-haves, they're nice-to-haves. And so you're just kind of optimizing that and learning and iterating. And then what will happen here, I'll just do this really quick. I'm going to throw in one more thing here really fast just to show you. So right now I'm just doing it by titles. But what I would do is I would do... I'm going to go really wild here, right? So I want to have not just a recruiter, but I want to have somebody with executive search experience because if they do that, like then they really understand talk tracks and things, right? And so these ones, that's probably too little. So what I would do, recruiter, let's see if they have a recruiter background. And for a renewal specialist, you don't have to know exec search, right? But I was just showing you some quick examples. But this guy actually, wow. Renewals team lead, operate with a strong focus. Oh my God, look at this guy. Presided over more than 200 customer accounts from SMB to commercial. He led that. He built the teams. He built the systems from the ground up. He has sales experience, former recruiter, smart guy. This guy is incredible. And I would absolutely reach out to this guy, Mark. I'm going to. On our call today, less than... I'm just kind of moving around. I would go find another... Not to say that Mark is not unique, but I would spend another 4 hours. I would go find another 200 candidates like Mark. And then what I'll show you here, because we have 1.2 billion people in our system plus our own data, at some point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to realize that there's certain candidates like Mark that I want to reach out to. Since Loxo automatically finds their contact info and adds them to our outreach campaign, um, I would pick our template probably and modify it, but I'll go ahead and just build one quickly. Brush past two quick things. It's going to find the contact information and get them into a campaign automatically. Those are often things that you know, you've got to jump over to another tool, upload a database, upload a, a list, two different times, build everything in. And you're telling me this is two clicks and it's already getting started versus bouncing around, which are probably hours for each job or, or person. Hours, hours, hours. And most people... It- most people don't do this. Um, they don't have the tools to do it. And if their employer or boss lets them go pay for a bolt-on you know, email automation drip sequencing tool, it can be really, really expensive. And then they have to pay for that. They have to bolt it on and try to integrate with their ATS. Um, they have to go get engineers and sign contracts and get buy-in to integrate with it. And now they've increased a lot of price. The systems don't talk. They're different languages. right? And then they have to go buy another system to find contact info. This is a nightmare. This is what people do. So you, Sam, are saying this is like pretty obvious, but it's not. No one's done this before. So if they're active candidates and they've applied, or if you had them in your database and you built the network, you already have their info. If you don't, 
no big deal, right? You can do it one at a time. And with Loxo, we would do it in bulk. But like now you have their phone and emails. Um, we can always do that. But it found two or three immediately. Now it's going to probably go find the next one. Uh, but what I would do is rather than me emailing or calling them one at a time, which we could do, we could even call through the system. We would have a pre-built outreach sequence set up for this renewals account manager. Again, because the renewals account manager role is so new, we've never done it. What I would generally do is I would pick my favorite template that I have. So we would pre-build one and either start with that and then just kind of tailor it. So I would pick a customer success director, like a lead role that we spend a lot of time perfecting and then just tailor it a bit for this role, right? Again, if you want to use GPT, it does it immediately for you. And then you can spend a bit of time tailoring it. But the reason why you'd set that up is because then you just drag and drop the candidate into this, the ones you want to reach out to, and you continue to source or you go work on five other searches and you do the same thing. So what will happen here, I'm going to summarize. Let's say if I'm working on one search, I guarantee, I'll guarantee, we'll, we'll decide what, what type of guarantees we'll do with people. If you do this and if you source... 300 high quality candidates for a role and you follow this process, you'll make the hire. You will make the hire extremely quickly. If you have the option and you, you're fortunate to work on more searches at once, if, we've seen people go from three searches, three to three to seven max before quality dips to being able to do three X that 21 searches, same velocity, same person. And so what you do is you do the same process. You drop people into outbound, you go work on another search. The system will start following up for people. But like, let's say I'd say I drop people in on the fly as I find these account renewal specialists. I send them my best pitch, right? If they respond to this first email, it takes them out and we take over from there in my inbox. But for everyone else who doesn't respond right away, the next message goes out like two days later. And so what we do is we basically build a, a sequence. So like email, wait two days, send another email. A minute later, send a text. They almost res always respond to that. If not, wait another day or two really high touch, add them to my call queue or even send a LinkedIn end mail and I don't have to log into LinkedIn. So like there's different steps and modalities you can do. So we created the job, we entered the title. Um, we immediately stayed in Loxo. Uh, we sourced from our data, 1.2 billion people, plus public data, plus LinkedIn data that's public, plus 100 plus data sources and your data, all in one interface. It can be ranked in order of best fit by AI or not. We fine tuned it really quickly. We learned our mental model adapted and got better and better and better. And then we found a search string or s query that we loved, which you can save and come back to and continue to optimize. This is talent intelligence. Now, as everyone starting to see this, talent intelligence is about speed. It's about data. It's about workflow. It's about continuous Kaizen and optimization. It's about leveraging tools and tech to be smarter. And then when you start to do this all in one system and get more efficient with workflow, all in one unified system, you're impossible to compete with. This is talent intelligence. I almost just want to stop right there. If there's a way to mic drop a mic drop episode, that would be the end of it. But no, I mean, this is, it's wild when you just look at it from the simplicity. And I know that we would joke before when, when you say like you, you assume most recruiters are using tools like this or that it's been this way for a while, but it, it really hasn't. And that's why no tactic within here is, is truly groundbreaking, but it's how they're strung together and the the flow that you go through in order to execute them that is where you gain all that efficiency. And it's it's the like I always hate to say like the work smarter, not harder type thing, but what you get done in eight hours a day when you're bouncing between stuff is a lot of fluff. You have to go log in, you have to do this, you have to do that. Here it's just it's a much more concentrated work where you get to do the work, not that that fluff stuff that you have to do to bounce. So uh, this was incredible. I'm I'm excited. I know I'm constantly learning every time that that we hop on one of these to go through it together. So we'll definitely go deeper in more episodes. But it was cool to I mean, this was the world, like you said, we've we've never even posted this, done anything about it. And within 10 minutes, you already found a couple of phenomenal candidates, let alone if you if you search for a couple hours, what we'll end up finding. So I love it. I love it. Thank you for joining this show. Uh, truly appreciate you sharing the knowledge about this, showing us how it works. And I really do hope that it inspires some recruiters to start thinking about their workflow, what they're doing in their day to day and how they can start to improve that. So everyone, this was phenomenal mic drop episode. Until next time.